Hey everybody, today I'm looking at The Houses of Renaissance, which is the first expansion for one of my favourite games of all time, Lorenzo Il Magnifico. So this is what you're going to get at the expansion, and I'm going to talk through exactly what you get. So obviously you've got your rule book and you've got a nice reference sheet to uh, help you navigate the game. You've got a new pink player um, option to play the game, so you can now play with five players, which to be honest, it's something that I wouldn't really consider doing. I think the game really does max out with four, and playing with a fifth player might just uh, be a bit overkill. You've got this new um, cardboard kind of strip that goes on over the main board of the base game. Uh, the only difference is, as you notice, you've got a fifth player spot here for player order, but you've also got this new resource on here with these special tokens. Now, these special tokens are these things here. And as I said, it's kind of a new resource that you can accumulate throughout the game, which gives you loads of different benefits. And these are all going to be face down. And when you draw one, you draw them randomly, but you can choose to cash them in whenever you like. And you don't have to show other players what they are. So you can kind of hold them close to your chest and just reveal them at the right time and maybe catch your opponent off guard a bit. So these are really, uh, really interesting. You've got three new excommunication tiles. You've got the level one, two, and three one. This one here, Basically, when you gain one of those special tokens, you gain one less. This one here doesn't let you use the fifth tower, which I'll get into in a second. And this one here, you lose five points for every fifth or sixth card you have of a set. So quite a nasty one, that. You've got your extra bits and bobs here for, obviously, to, to suit playing with five players, because you're probably going to run out of resources playing at that player count if you don't have these additional ones. And as I mentioned, one of the big kind of touches to this expansion is this fifth player, or this fifth tower, I should say. Now, this fifth tower is going to attach to the side of the board as an additional row where you can draw your cards from. Now, as you can see, they are two new spots here from the fifth and seventh um, pip value where you get additional bonus tiles, these, these quick tiles that, or these quick tokens that I mentioned earlier. Now, the cool thing about this fifth tower is that the cards that come with it are all colours. So you, as you can see, you've got your greens, your yellows, your blues, and your purples there. And you're going to draw eight of these cards randomly from each age. And so you're going to get a lot of uh, variability here um, and never going to be sure on what you're going to get. So I do like that variation there, the lots of replayability, loads of different options and strategies, and you're not going to know what is out there every time. But because of the, the new fifth tower, there is um, these things here, or basically you're going to use one of them depending on the player count, which basically tightens the board up. So let's say in a four player game, one of these is going to go over the, the main board on one of the strips. And as you can see, the, the pip values of these dice is going to go up quite significantly, making the cards in that tower a lot more expensive. And every round, this is going to shift over to uh, a new tower, making that one more expensive. So just a nice touch just to keep things tight and um, keep it competitive. So what else we get in this game is this here. Now these are the family tiles. Now this is, I think is an absolutely brilliant idea and I'm absolutely shocked that no other game does this. Um, basically, at the start of the game, well this, sorry, this is gonna change how the game sets up. So as you can see here, from all these different family tiles, now I apologize because of the reflection, they all have a unique kind of ability. And some of these abilities are absolutely fascinating, such as having an extra worker, or um, at the start of the game, you draw two, two new family cards and you can keep one in your hand and you can play one instantly without even having to pay its criteria. You've got um, these ones here. So whenever you draw a green card, you can activate your culture at a minus one of that card value. So some of these are extremely powerful, um, such as being able to spend seven workers in to get any card of, on, of your choice. Um, you can spend military points to get money. You know, there's, there's a lot of options you've got here, but the cool thing about it is, the way you get these powers, or you decide who gets these powers, is you have a bit of an auction at the beginning of the game. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna draw these family tiles equal to the number of players, and add one of these boards to the bottom of each of those tiles. Now, everybody is going to then vote by using one of their player counters, let's say this is a counter, on what they're willing to take that power for. So say I wanted 
um, let's say I wanted this power here, this card here, so I really wanted that extra family card at the beginning of the game. I could say, right, I'm willing to take um, to take uh, five coins, two workers, and three stone in order to have that power. Then somebody else might say, well, that's that's far too much. I'm willing to start with less than that. And they might say, oh, I'm willing to start with three coins, one servant and two stone. And you basically keep going like that until everybody is settled on what they're willing to sacrifice in order to get the power. So you're either going to possibly have a weaker power, but more resources or the more powerful competitive powers and start with a lot less resources. But obviously that's completely on, you know, at the discretion of the players. If they think something's real valuable, then they're going to have to bid for it. But I really do like that. It's an absolutely brilliant idea. And again, I've said, I'm so surprised that nothing else uses this. It's just a brilliant auto-balancing kind of um, mechanism. Because as I said, if you think someone's got away with something too cheap, that's completely your own fault. So this is, for me, one of the coolest um, ideas for an expansion that I think I've ever seen. Now, that outside, we've also got some more family cards here, um, which can get shoveled into the ones in the base game. And I'll let you have a quick look through them. Hopefully I won't get too much glare on them. There we go. And some of these family cards are new as well because they give you additional action spots that you can go to and that only you can go to. So a really nice touch there where you get exclusive, um, exclusive worker spots, which is a really good idea. Uh, there are the other ones there. So yeah, that's everything you're going to get in this expansion. Um, I'm really happy with it. That is the Houses of Renaissance for Lorenzo El Magnifico. Um, if anything, you know, forget forget the fifth player. I don't think anybody will use it, but at least it's a cool colour because you get pink. Um, this fifth tower, I think, is going to be an absolutely must-have. And also this new starting criteria, the... the the powers and the bidding kind of mechanism is absolutely fascinating and worth the um, expansion alone. Absolutely love it. I think it's an absolute must buy, especially if you're a fan of the game, obviously. Um, I don't think it's gonna sway you too much if you don't like the game, but if you do, it's only gonna increase that love for it. So that's The Houses of Renaissance um, by Virginio Gili and Flaminia Brasini with Simona Luciani. Um, if you have enjoyed this video, please hit like and subscribe to my channel and check out my other videos too. For everyone else, I'll see you next time on Chairman of the Board. Bye.